Hello everybody, welcome to Unit 1 Biology, Area Study 1. And today we are looking at the cell cycle. So we'll be looking at cell growth, cell death, um, and differentiation of cells. So in terms of the dot points, we'll be looking at binary fission in prokaryotic cells, the eukaryotic cell cycle, looking at the phases of mitosis and cytokinesis in plant and animal cells, um, what apoptosis is and how that process is regulated, um, and then what can happen in terms of malfunctions of apoptosis as well. And then looking at the last component, which is stem cells, allowing for differentiation and renewal. Remember, again, these are just a summary um, to help you revise and go through your notes, um, but not to learn all of the material. So I don't go super in depth. It's just more of a surface summary. All right. So starting off with prokaryotic um, cell division really which we call binary fission okay so it's where we have our one cell and it splits into two identical copies it is a lot more of a simplified process compared to mitosis and therefore that's why it's happening in our prokaryotic cells our simpler cells so in terms of cell replication and why sort of division of these cells is important it's for the growth and development of cells okay so all humans we know we begin as a single cell sperm egg combined one cell and we eventually become a human um the same way those cells have to specialize okay so for growth and development for maintenance and repair say you've damaged some skin um you need that skin to grow back again okay um and reproduction so prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells replicate um to reproduce and when they replicate they do do so by enlarging their population. So that's purpose of cell replication in general. Looking at prokaryotes, so things like bacteria, they reproduce by this process that we're going to talk about, which is called binary fission, um, and it's producing two genetically identical copies of a cell. So we can see here that we basically have a cell before replication, okay? It has circular chromosomes, DNA, okay? Not in a nucleus, just sort of in the cell. And what happens first is that DNA is going to replicate. It's going to create another copy of itself. The cell is then going to elongate, which means come a bit longer. And that's sort of in preparation to eventually cleave like this, okay? And this part here where it's cleaving is called cytokinesis. And that's the process of that cell eventually going to split now into two separate cells where a new membrane is going to be formed down that center and we can say that two identical copies of the original cell have been formed okay the thing that you need to know is that these are genetically identical in terms of the stages there's no specific names for the stages here that we discuss we just need to know dna replicates cell elongates and cell cleaves and undergoes cytokinesis to become two cells. Eukaryotic cell cycle, however, is a lot more complex, okay? So the cell cycle for eukaryotes can be split into three major stages. The first stage is called interphase, and this is basically where all the cell growth and replication of the DNA is happening. The second stage is what we call mitosis, okay? And this is basically where again we split into a few different phase names um and this is where the sort of actual cell division is happening and then we have cytokinesis which is similar in um, binary fission the eventual splitting of those cells so if we look at the cell cycle this purple part here is that interphase and interphase itself is split into three components okay as you can see so the first component is the g1 phase and that's just a growth phase the s phase is where the dna replicates and that's important we then have the g2 which is more growth and once we reach the end of g2 this is where meta um mitosis is going to begin the thing to note as well is we have these checkpoints. We have a G1 checkpoint and a G2 checkpoint. And that's basically to see if the growth and the replication after the S phase has actually occurred properly. And if it has, then we are going to undergo mitosis. If not, the cell will undergo apoptosis, which is cell death. 
we have our mitosis, which we're going to go through. So you can see here, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and then at the end, we have cytokinesis, which is that last section. So this is just a little bit of a diagram to show you that this is all of our interphase, this is our mitosis, and this is our cytokinesis. In terms of what's actually happening in mitosis is the complex part that we're going to look at. So the first stage, we call it prophase. Prophase is basically where all of your chromatin is going to condense, okay, um, into distinct chromosomes, and they can there at this point become visible under a microscope, okay? Centrioles are going to migrate towards opposite ends, okay? And we are going to have what we call spindle fibers forming. These spindle fibers are these yellow sections, which are going to be really important in the next step. In metaphase, what happens is those spindle fibers sort of fully form around um, towards the end. So they combine to the centrioles here, which are um, sort of coming to the opposite poles at, at prophase, but they are attaching at the ends here and at the same point attaching to the centromere of the chromosome, which is the middle part of the chromosome. So metaphase is where all of your chromosomes are lining up on the equator. They're lining up in the middle of, as you can see here. Anaphase is where your chromosomes are going to start to get pulled apart and they get pulled apart at the centromere um, and they get pulled as chromatids, where a chromatid was half of the chromosome. Okay, so remembering our chromosome basically looks like this, where this middle section was that centromere and then half of the chromosome is called a chromatid. And then telophase is where the chromosomes then again densely will pack together again um, at either end of the cell and a new nuclear membrane is going to form. And you can see that cleavage starting to happen, which is where cytokinesis is going to occur and split it into two identical cells. So these two cells at the end, once cytokinesis has happened, is going to be identical to the cell that we started off with at the beginning, okay? Eukaryotic mitosis is all about creating identical copies. We will talk about meiosis a little bit later on in another video, um, and that's to do with variation, okay? So they're going to have different daughter cells produced. Um, but these in mitosis are identical. As opposed to cells being created, we also have a process of cell death. Okay, so cell death has a special name. It's called apoptosis. Okay, um, and it's basically a regulated process. Okay, so it's programmed cell death that's initiated by what we call either intrinsic or extrinsic factors. So there's two major pathways that we look at. We look at the intrinsic pathway, which we also call the mitochondrial pathway. Okay. And that's basically where the internal components like the DNA is damaged, okay, in the cell. The mitochondria will be the things that detect that damage, hence why it's called the mitochondrial pathway. And they release what we call cytochrome C, okay. Cytochrome C is going to bind with particular um, proteins and it's going to form apoptosomes, which is going to activate what we call these caspase enzymes um, that are going to initiate this apoptosis. The extrinsic pathway is initiated by signals outside of the cell compared to inside of the cell for intrinsic. And we call this the death receptor pathway. Okay, so basically what's happening here is death signaling molecules are going to be recognized by death receptor proteins on the surface of cells. Okay, and they're going to be released by more so immune cells. So when these molecules bind to death receptor proteins, those caspase enzymes are going to be activated and they're going to initiate apoptosis. So hopefully you can see that the caspase enzymes, once they're released, is what is initiating apoptosis. In terms of a apoptotic cell, okay, the main process to be able to identify as well is our blebbing. So you can see here that blebbing is producing apoptotic bodies. Um, and apoptotic bodies are basically fragments that can then be um, digested by phagocytes and other immune cells to be destroyed and taken away.
if apoptosis fails, this is where we can actually start to talk about cancer. Okay, so this is disruption in the regulation of the cell cycle. So if there is not enough apoptosis occurring, so apoptosis isn't occurring properly, this is what can result in cancer because cancers are basically tumors, which are too many cells that actually shouldn't be there. Okay, so it's a cancer is where there's more cells and they're cells that are replicating and replicating and replicating, but they're the ones that should be actually be broken down. But apoptosis of those cells isn't happening. Apoptosis is controlled. Necrosis is something that you may come across. It's not specifically in the study design, but it is talked about when we discuss these um, topics, is where it's not controlled cell death. Okay, So in this case, the cell sort of swells, 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 and then bursts, ruptures, and everything goes everywhere. And this is what causes inflammation. Okay. The final part of this sort of area of study is looking at stem cells. So stem cells are basically a cell that is undifferentiated. So it does not have any specific function. It will become specialized, okay? And that's where it can differentiate into becoming those specialized cells. But as a base, they are undifferentiated. So we have different potency levels when we talk about stem cells. We have something called totipotent, pluripotent, and multipotent. So totipotent, basically, are stem cells that can differentiate into any type of cell. A hair cell, a skin cell, a brain cell, any, any type of cell that you can think of. Pluripotent cells, however, um, they can differentiate into multiple stem cell types, okay? So these are what we call our embryonic stem cells, which are found in the early stages of a developing embryo. And then multipotent um, can differentiate into different types of cells, but not as many. So they're a little bit more limited um, to specific tissues or organs. So things like the bone marrow that contains blood stem cells that can differentiate into different blood cells, okay? So your red blood cells, your white blood cells, your platelets. In terms of cell formation, okay, we know that when we have embryonic development happening, we have a sperm and an egg combined to form a cell. That sperm and egg combining we call a zygote, okay, so that's basically a fertilized egg. And after a period of time, we have those cells replicating to form the eight cell stage, and then they form what we call a blastocyst. And this blastocyst is going to split into three germ layers. Those layers are called the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the endoderm. Okay? And what's going to happen is those three layers are going to form different things. So the ectoderm could form things like your neurons, so your nerve cells. They could form skin cells. They could form pigment cells. Your mesoderm, that's going to form things like your muscle, so skeletal muscle, smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, red blood cells, bone cells. Endoderm is going to form things like stomach cells, pancreatic cells, liver cells. Okay, so these are all specialized cells that are going to differentiate. So after about nine weeks, this is where we say a fetus has started to form. So those cells have really become specialized. Okay, so in terms of talking about totipotent, pluripotent, and multipotent, totipotent cells are the zygote. These can become anything. Pluripotent is where we're sort of splitting into those different germ layers of the blastocyst, um, where they are going to be limited in what type of cells can be produced from them. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'm happy to answer them. Hopefully that's provided you a bit more of a summary for Area Study 1. Thanks. Bye.